You're watching ANN, the American News Network, and we're watching you. The following message has been approved. The preceding message was approved by the Department of Homeland Security and found to contain no secret codes or terrorist messages of any kind. The preceding message telling you that the preceding message was approved by the Department of Homeland Security has been approved by the National Security Agency. The preceding message telling you all previous preceding messages were approved has not yet been approved. Please watch at your own risk. This is the ANN Morning Show for Tuesday, January 27, 2016, with your hosts, Robin Britton and Bill Cavanaugh. Good morning, I'm Robin Britton. And I'm Bill Cavanaugh. Thanks for joining us. We greet you this morning with breaking news. It's been almost a decade since the mysterious disappearance of Senator Barack Obama. Since that time, many questions have been raised as to what exactly happened to the senator on that fateful night in October of 2008. And from what we're being told, we should have an answer to that puzzling question in just a few moments as the Werner Commission is ready to release the findings of its eight-year-long investigation into the senator's disappearance. Joining us live from the White House press room is senior White House correspondent Victoria Page. Good morning, Victoria. What's the mood like over there? Good morning, everyone. Well, even amongst the many conspiracy theorists, most folks agree it probably wasn't a good idea for Senator Obama to go hunting at night on the privately owned pheasant preserve of Halliburton executive Gary Price, Jr. The senator's subsequent disappearance was unofficially ruled a missing persons, was it not? It was, Robin. Yet, more than a few Democratic voices have been crying, foul play, ever since. Mm, a word to those Democratic voices, if I may. Just because Senator Werner is a close personal friend of President McCain, that doesn't mean that... Uh, uh, guys, guys, I'm getting word that they're ready. Yes, yes, here comes Senator Werner now. Senator Eumis J. Warner. We now take you live to the White House. Good person. morning. After eight years of investigations, sub-investigations, sub-sub-investigations, and investigations to make sure the original investigation was being lost in all the investigating, this commission has concluded the following. Uh, with regard to the disappearance of Senator Barack Obama, there has been no wrongdoing of any kind on the part of the three Halliburton executives. Thank you. Uh, Senator, Senator, is there any evidence to support your findings? Yeah, we, uh, we found this in Senator Obama's personal study. Here's what it says. Uh, <clears throat> the race is too close. I can't take the pressure. I'm moving back to Kenya. Thank you. Sir, 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 I mean, isn't Kenya spelled with an E? Yeah. Have to ask a Kenyan. Senator, 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 Senator that's what about the rumors of a photo taken by the security cameras on Mr. Price's property that supposedly show three men shoving Senator Obama into the trunk of a car? What that photo shows is the three gentlemen helping the senator out of the trunk, not throwing them in it. But the, sir, sir, can we see those photos, please, sir? I'm sorry, but that, that photo is classified, and the interest of national security can be viewed only by members of this commission. Good day. But, but Senator, how could that Senator, be Senator aren't you the sole member of the commission? That's enough. No more questions. Uh, uh, sir, sir, we, sir, 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 please. please. This is and there you have it. The door can finally be closed on all the hullabaloo surrounding Senator Barack Obama's eight-year-long disappearance. He's obviously alive and well and living in Kenya. At the White House, I'm Victoria Page. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Victoria. Great job. The results of our ANN People Poll are in. The question was, are polls really an accurate way of determining people's opinions? 29% of you said you believed that 42% would respond favorably 31% of the time, while 28% said you believed 56% of you would respond favorably 27% of the time, leaving 44% in the negative 10% of the time. So there you have it. Robin? Time to take a quick look at weather with ANN meteorologist Trey West.
Craig. Thank you, Robin. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Let's take a look and see what's happening on this lovely January morning. It's a balmy 97 degrees up there in Killington, Vermont, but that's pretty normal for this time of year. A word of the wise, if you plan on doing some skiing this weekend, be sure and wear your government-issued ski masks. While it's great that the new chemically engineered snow has a melting point of 200 degrees Fahrenheit, the reports of the vapors being carcinogenic have yet to be denied. And taking a look in the Lone Star State, it's yet another day of flooding down in Galveston, Texas. Word is about 50, that's right, 50,000 homes have been lost. But the good news is the folks at FEMA tell us they've just about managed to contain that chunk of glacial ice that floated down from Greenland and melted in the Gulf of Mexico. One resident reported spotting a group of penguins waddling down the street. My advice, grab the camera, get the kids, and don't pass up a great photo op. Staying in the south, it looks like it's going to be a gorgeous day around Parish Beach, formerly New Orleans, with highs expected to reach around 120, except residents there have reported seeing what looks to be black snow falling for the last three days. You know, it's times like this which makes you wonder if dissolving the Environmental Protection Agency in the wake of military spending was a good idea after all. Just kidding. Have a great day, everyone. That's a look at weather. Let's send it back to Robin and Bill. Thank you, Trey. Entertaining as always. Coming up in the next half hour, Vice President Palin's 10-year-old granddaughter is pregnant. Should the media even be focusing on this? We'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm George Foreman. For years, I've sold millions of my grills to millions of folks all around the world. But now, with gas prices going higher and higher every day, I decided to put my money where my mouth is and help out my fellow Americans where it really counts. That's why I invented the George Foreman Backyard Oil Well and Barbecue Grill. Forget those fat cats at the big oil companies. Now, with Big George's help, you can drill for your own Texas tea and cook up a few dogs at the same time. I lost my job because I couldn't afford to drive to work anymore. And even though my mother's funeral was only 10 miles away, we couldn't afford to make the trip. But now, with the George Foreman Backyard Oil Well and Barbecue Grill, I just take the grease from the burgers and mix it with the crap it pumps from the ground, and voila, we've got Formanol. Formanol is the only thing our car runs on these days, and it gets 50 miles a gallon. And everywhere we go, our car always has that great barbecue smell. Thanks, George Foreman. Take it from Big George. Don't be a mule, make your own fuel. Only $39.95. George Foreman and the Polygel Corporation are not responsible for any sudden explosions that may occur resulting in the deaths or accidental burning and or maiming of any small children, pets, or relatives dumb enough to stand around the grill while cooking. Welcome back. With the ANN Entertainment Watch, here's the newest member of the morning show team, former cast member of MTV's The Real World Kabul, Sandy Carlson. What's happening, Sandy? Thanks for that warm welcome, Robin. Well, gang, we all knew it was only a matter of time before someone gave Osama Bin Laden his own reality show. And sure enough, that honor goes to VH1. You're kidding. I'm so not. Apparently, the executives at VH1 have reached a deal with Bin Laden's agent, R.E. Emanuel, in which the cast and crew will be sworn to secrecy so as not to reveal the location of Bin Laden's hideout during taping. The new show, tentatively titled Bin Laden's Bin Laden, debuts next month and features the usual assortment of bimbos and tramps looking to capture the heart and, more importantly, the wallet of the world's wealthiest, most wanted man. Doesn't he have, like, five wives already? Six, Robin. And in keeping with the chauvinistic theme of the Middle East, we're told Osama, the stud that he is, will get to pick not one, not two, but five winners. Let's look at a clip. Trinity, you are one fine jihadi. <laughs> Thank you, Big Al. What a booty! You take this offering of goat testicles and continue to rock my cave. Of course I will. Back! Back! Step off, bitch! Hmm. Miriam, you are a sweet, sweet girl. 
with a very big heart. Oh, thanks, Big O. You really are the bomb. Mm, right back at you, baby cakes. But oy vey, girlfriend. With the nose like that, you must be a Jew. Mazotov. My faith. Don't miss Bin Laden's Bin Lovin Tuesdays at 10 on VH1 following Survivor Jewish Wedding. Now that's reality. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sandy. That's just great. It was one year ago today that the nation's largest public health provider, Blue Cross Blue Shield, closed its doors for good. These days, most Americans are beginning to come to grips with the reality of living without adequate medical coverage. Joining us now via satellite is Dr. Byron Downs, chairman of the new wildly successful cable channel HSN, the Home Surgery Network. Good morning, doctor. Good evening, Bill. Tell us briefly, doctor, why is the Home Surgery Network such a success? It's real simple, Bill. Most folks just can't afford to get sick these days. Those of us who are lucky enough to have some form of coverage get turned down anyway, but not at HSN. What we do is sell you all the products you need to operate on your friend or loved one in the privacy of your own home. And thanks to our recent partnership with Comcast, once the home surgery kit arrives, you simply turn your TV to the Surgery On Demand channel. And from there, you can choose from over 200 different medical procedures, each one meticulously guided by a top doctor in his or her field. Appendix, tonsils, heart transplant, whatever. That's just incredible. I have to ask, doctor, what's the bandage for? I'm glad you asked, Bill. I had a tumor in my head the size of a golf ball. Let me guess, home surgery network? Exactly. My daughter, Miranda, doesn't have her license yet, but that girl has one heck of a steady hand. Just fascinating. One last question, doctor, from my own curiosity. What's the most popular procedure to date? That would be breast enlargement, Bill. Of course it would. Must be a lot of happy husbands out there. Dr. Byron Downs, you truly are a pioneer, sir. Good night, Bill. Troops in Tehran were later to learn that the first divisions of Marines should begin pulling out of the severely war-torn country in early 2017. No. From the outset important. of the invasion, getting simple okay. supplies to the uh, troops Robin? has been... Yes, Bill? Uh, my apologies, Robin. I'm being told we've just received a tape from the Al Jazeera network regarding the cafe bombing in Kabul yesterday. Oh. Uh, Apparently, the Taliban are claiming responsibility, and we're told the tape is authentic. The man you will see is Taliban leader Omar al-Muol Let's roll the tape. American infidels, let it be known. This latest attack is in retaliation for the attack that the U.S. said was in retaliation for our attack after the U.S. retaliated due to our initial retaliation on the original and first attack. This attack should in no way be confused with the other attacks that were just attacks for the sake of attacking and were not in retaliation for anything. Have a nice day. Towel head. Thank you, Bill. Good work. Taking a look at what's happening in our own backyard, we go to John Hampton standing by in El Paso, Texas. John. Thanks, Robin. Mexican authorities were clearly not prepared to deal with the massive problem they're now being faced with, and so they're doing the best they can to beef up security at all points along the border. Sources tell me they've increased their presence about 30 percent or so in the last week. And this increase in security on the Mexican side is all because of the overwhelming number of Mexicans trying to re-enter Mexico? That's correct, Robin. It's like a mass exodus here. Due to astronomical gas prices and skyrocketing unemployment numbers, no one wants to be an American anymore. Not even a Mexican. It's that simple. Hard times all around. Thank you, John. Bill? Only rats desert the ship. The captain stays at the helm. Here's a look at what's coming up at the top of the hour. 
Former President George W. Bush's memoirs, From the White House to White Castle, goes on sale tomorrow. And what may be the biggest story to date in the never-ending mortgage crisis? The White House will be put into foreclosure next week unless the McCain administration can come up with $33.5 million in penalties. Apparently, former President Bush, not knowing the White House was already paid for, took a Fannie Mae mortgage on it. And you can guess the rest. These and other stories at the top of the hour and from everyone at ANN, a special happy birthday to President McCain, who turns 100 today. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.